Hi everybody, it's Laura Kingen. It's Wednesday, it's 1.15. I'm scheduling this for one o'clock. I'm sorry, it's time to run a little late, but I'm ready to go. Running around a little hot. Uh, although we've actually had a beautiful summer in Flagstaff, but otherwise, uh, just a little warm today. Anyway, um, welcome to Sensory Solutions Inc. Here's my business card. There we go. I've been in business since 2008. Um, I have served a lot of schools, a lot of development, developmentally disabled group homes. I've gone into individuals' homes. Um, I've worked at hospitals. I've worked on stages. Uh, I've worked in an acupuncture community, a community acupuncture clinic. I've done a lot of different uh, kinds of facilities. But I've spent the last 15 plus years working in people's homes. <laughs> and here we are stuck at home. So what I've decided is I want to continue these Wednesdays at one o'clock. I benefited from a lot of freebies online and continuing to take some classes and benefit from other people's free offerings. And as I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to make a living going forth in this new situation, I'm benefiting from these freebies. So I realize that's like kind of my calling. So I'd like to keep these going. Um, and I want to, I love the idea of the interaction, um, so I want to encourage that. And um, in between these sessions, I want to welcome you all to make comments, um, if there's certain topics that you're interested in, if you have some personal issues that maybe through like um, movement, uh, self-regulation, range of, range of motion, and I'm sure we'll come up with other topics too, but um, I want to welcome that and see if I can help you all um, as I've been helped through other people um, online. Um, yes, certainly as adults, um, I want to welcome you as well. Even though my focus has been more with children um, and the activities that I tend to pick are, uh, dare I say, children oriented. Um, but they can definitely be modified for adults. So I, I just want to offer myself um, in this way. Granted, um, I want to, I'm looking also for, like I said, work. So I'm available for individual evaluations and I'll allude to that as we go about today and what I'm doing. Um, and the idea with the evaluation is to really be able to target specifics per each individual, per the individual to get more, um, Refine, refinement. Um, but these Wednesday groups can be generalized. And if there's been no evaluation, I have to be very careful anyway about prescribing specific activities, but we can definitely talk in generalities. Um, and I'd like to do that. So I, I, please like and share, pass this along. Um, still unsure about what's going to happen with the schools. Um, my concern, obviously, I've worked so many years with SPED, with special education. Um, what about those people, those students, those families? Um, that this can maybe be a way that I can offer some support, whether you actually uh, take me on as a therapist to work with you individually, or you just come on Wednesdays at 1 o'clock. So anyway, kind of going on and on a little bit about that, and that's part of I think what these videos are for is like a forum um, as a way to communicate and let you guys all know what I'm doing. Um, so I'm putting this out and I'm asking for feedback. What would you guys like? So I thought what to, I'd like to do today, um, I alluded to last week, is actually just do a treatment session of, of sorts. I'll show you um, a little bit about how I would go about doing a treatment session. And I, I ultimately would like to offer these as a paid session to families, say three or four families at a time, um, with or without an evaluation, but to make it more specific to specific families where I can really be um, a little more specific. So um, in addition to these Wednesday freebies, I would like to also make that um, uh, available as a paid service. Um, so anyway. So this particular session is going to be more sensory motor oriented. 
And I mean, I do have other treatment sessions that I do like a range of motion like we did last week, where that little treatment session was a little very different than this one. But this is the bulk of what I've done and what I enjoy doing, because um, it's a lot of fun. And what I'd like to do is do this activity, but then um, give you some adaptations of um, what you could use at home in lieu of therapy equipment. Like for example, do you have like a really good ball? Maybe not. What can we use in lieu of, although honestly a big ball is, you know, the art of therapy is taking an activity and how many different kinds of issues in our treatment plan can we address in one activity? And uh, exercise ball, you can do so many different kinds of things. I should probably just do one Wednesday on the exercise ball if you guys are interested. I can give you all kinds of ideas of what you can do with an exercise ball. Um, even just using it as a chair. I used to, I've carried this ball around for 25, 30 years and have used it in so many different ways, including just as a chair. There would be some homes, I hate to say it, but I would bring my own chair just in case, um, especially in the day of big bed bugs. Sorry, I even mentioned that. Okay, let's go on. So, let's say, for example, uh, I'm working with a client, or you have somebody at home who has some issues like a balance. We've talked about balance want to incorporate that concept into more of a treatment session. Um, but let's say there's some organizational issues. Let's say the person also has handwriting problems. They have problems feeding themselves. Um, so there's some fine motor, maybe some eye hand coordination or visual motor issues. These are the things in the evaluation that have come out, let's say, as problem areas and we want to target that for therapy. One of my most favorite things to do are obstacle courses. Because you can do so many different kinds of things with obstacle courses, I think it's unlimited. Yes, I have therapy equipment, but I also have some things around my house that we can use in lieu of. So, let's say there's organization, balance, and some eye-hand coordination issues that we want to work on. Let's do an obstacle course to address those. One of the things about addressing organization is through sequence. You do this, 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 and this. And then you do it over and over and over again. I'm gonna wave back. I'm gonna try to wave back. <clears throat> so we wanna work on that organization and we wanna do it over and over and over again. And kind of develop a patterning. And the obstacle courses are great for that. So. Just happen to have some things around the house. Hula hoop. One of the things I love about the hula hoops is it's a great place for, um, this is where you start. This is where, you know, a lot of people have body awareness issues or they have a problem with their body and space. So a hula hoop kind of gives you, this is like a boundary to help you kind of get aware of your body. So I'm gonna use this as my starting point for the obstacle course. So let's see, what else can we use? A lot of you have these. A lot of you have these. Not everybody has sticks, by the way. I have horse out of the Navajo Reservation. They don't even have trees to climb. It's tough. So, in lieu of this, I'm gonna use my sticks. And I'm hoping that you guys can see this. So, let's bring that down just a little bit more. I'm going to keep this a simple obstacle course since um, I'm in my own home and for demo purposes. Now, you can see that there's some musical equipment here. There's a drum kit. It's my husband. There are other people in our households that we have to work with. I purposely did not ask him to take that down because I want to show you there are safety issues. At least today, I moved the TV down. We need a clear space. There are real serious safety issues with these, these activities. Like this exercise ball. People can get really hurt. 
So safety first. Well, I'll say my three most important rules. Have fun, be safe, and share. And in my opinion, if you're being safe, then you're having fun. So make sure your area is safe enough, okay? And I recommend you may want to have, adult, you know, adults may need to supervise these activities. I mean, that's a whole other topic is when do you do these activities? Maybe come to a therapist and we can talk about it and, and make a prescribed plan of when might be best. Like with academics, you know, it's going to be different this year. But, you know, if you've got somebody who's really struggling with math and they're uptight, it's really important to be strategic in addressing that, those math issues. You know, are you going to do that after um, uh, somebody that's kind of stressed? Or do you want to calm, if somebody's having problems with math or with handwriting, you want to kind of calm them down and then go into a more stressful situation. Don't start out stressed, because we were talking about that with self-regulation last, last time. But if somebody's already stressed, heightened, and then they're going to go into another more heightened, stressful situation, it's going to make even higher. I mean, look at where we're at today. The stress just keeps going and going and going. It's like, where is the end? Somehow we need to bring it back down, bring it back full circle. Anyway, um, so as far as when to do this, strategy. Maybe every day. Maybe some kids need to do physical activities a couple of times a day. For how long? I mean, this is part of the prescription, and it's kind of a little more than where I wanted to go today, but these are some of the considerations. So let's bring it back. We're talking about organization, balance, and eye-hand coordination. So I just happen to have a basket full of fun things. Let's see. If I put this in, you can't see that so well, can you? <clears throat> so, I'm just going to work with the things in my home. And the idea is to kind of model so that you have some ideas too. So that whether you never have money to pay for a therapist or get some ideas through, you know, hiring somebody personally, hopefully these are some ideas that you can use freebie <laughs> and benefit from and pass it along. So, yes, I have some different kinds of balls. Oh, the reason why I have this out is because it was something I found in my home that could be used for like a balance beam. Yeah, I don't know how well you can see that, but that's why I had that out. So, I've got balls in here. Let's say you don't have all these creative balls that I do, that I have. You probably have stuffed animals. Great shot. Frisbees. All kinds of balls. This is another thing. Maybe on another Wednesday, which would definitely be another topic. Our ball handling activities. There's a reason why I have many different kinds of things to throw. Although it gets me into a little trouble because apparently now that I'm married, one of the things that I do is I tend to throw things into the garbage and I tend to miss sometimes. So I chuckle because I've done this so much in therapy. I'm so used to throwing things in. It's one of those things that I kind of need to work on and try to keep myself in check. Anyway, a little side personal thing. But these are just some of the different kinds of things that um, I have here at home that you might as well. Nobody says you have to have one specific kind of ball. There's, I mean, I have animals. It's more than enough. Now, as long as the parents get permission, you know, what about using a laundry basket instead of like a basketball hoop? You know, something like that. Let's see. So I'm trying to build an obstacle course as I'm talking. And I think I'm making it too big. So when I come into people's homes or would work with you in therapy, you know, each day is a different day. And each day the needs might be a little different. So 
there's something called coming from like a, a center, a child-centered or a client-centered place. I need to each to each day, like today. What's going on today? Let's address today. So instead of me coming in and, and having like a, a pre-planned, okay, we're going to do this, 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 and this. What happens if there was a big stress the night before? A person didn't sleep well, and somebody, maybe somebody died. If I come in and say, okay, let's work on handwriting, we're going to do these, these exercises, these handouts, that's not where the person's at. You need to be more in tune with it, where, where they are at in any particular way. Same thing with me. You know, every day I'm different. So it's a fresh thing. So I kind of, how I work is kind of spontaneous. What's going on today? Let's address that. Keeping in mind my treatment plan. A l most of my clients, self-regulation is one of those goals. Um, so that would be one of the things that we would definitely address on any particular goal, especially if it's stressed. So I say that because I'm kind of doing this on the cuff, modeling it again, how I would do a treatment plan. So I've got my basket of stuff. Now, again, we're working on balance. Most of you guys don't have stepping stones. This is where creativity can come in. And again, part of that client center is if you're going to do, like, say, movement activity, let your child participate with you and be creative. Let them be part of the process. So, in lieu of these stepping stones, I've got rocks. Why not? for today. Probably can't see them very well. Ah, sorry everybody. Learning as we go adjustments. Well, might be a little better anyway. Okay, so one other thing I wanted to show you in my little laundry basket of tricks. Of cones. Again, we're working with this particular client on eye hand coordination. So we can use these different cones. The reason why I wanted to mention this is because I'm kind of emphasizing some adaptations for home. A lot of people don't have cones. But a lot of people do have their shoes. So even think about it like that. You know, if there's a way to prop it like this. See, this is a fun thing. I just came up with this now. Throw a hoop, you know, onto the creativity is 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 like unlimited. So, okay. I mentioned this last time, or a different time. One of my favorite things are plank pose. A lot of people have issues with their sense, sense of touch, whether it's because of some kind of physical damage, maybe some PTSD, something psychological. There's a lot of different issues, sensory issues. Um, yeah, I know, I'm very conscious. Pine cones are pretty uncomfortable to touch. Um, but that's one of the reasons why I use these different kinds of things, is to work on their sense of touch. Um, how much do I want to get into that one? That's a topic, certainly, in and of itself, I could talk about. Um, so I think I'll just do that. I'll just let that go for now. It's just really important. This is a squeeze item. Not even, I mean, you can even use this as like a, a stress ball. But that's, again, a whole other thing. So I'm just going to let that go. Um, So let's finish this obstacle course for now. I'm gonna use this as like my, my final line. <clears throat> so, let's put this obstacle course together. <laughs> this is modified just to kind of give you a sense of what I'm looking for. 
Again, let's reiterate. For working with somebody who has some organizational issues, some balance issues, and some eye hand coordination problems that affects being able to sit still for a long time, affects handwriting, affects writing. So, now that we've created this, let's do it. I recommend doing it at least three times. I'll give the instructions and then we'll do it. So first, stand in the hula hoop. Then you walk on the balance beam, which are the sticks. Then you put your heels on the rocks. It's the best I can do. I don't know how to angle it any better without it toppling over. So, I'm gonna put my heels. Nice view. Hello. My heels are on the rocks. Hold on. I'm gonna reach down, I'm gonna grab an item, and I'm gonna throw it into the bin. I'm gonna step off the rocks, step over the finish line, and there's my obstacle course. I'm gonna do it again. Let's start. Walk on the balance beam, step on the stones, grab an item, throw it in the bin, step across the finish line. Let's do it again. Gonna start, gonna walk on the balance beam, heels on the rocks, reach down, grab an item, throw it in the bin, step over the finish line. So, where do I want to go with this? There's like so many different ways I want to go. One of the things I like to do is time the obstacle courses. That's one, it depends on what my goal is. Sometimes if you do timing, people will race too much and then they'll lose the quality. Sometimes you do want to do timing depending on the obstacle course and what you're looking for. And one of the things that can be done with that is if you are working on math skills, <laughs> the perfect opportunity, have, it, have some, uh, something to write on, time it. Every time they go through the obstacle course, time it. Person comes over, writes on the board, a piece of paper or whatever, it's getting that handwriting in, they can write down their time. Do it again, write down the time again, do it again, write the time down. If you get three good times, then you can start working on averages. Have them add that up. Average it out. What's your average amount of time? Can you beat that? Um, if that's really what I'm looking for. Um, because if I'm really looking for quality, I may want to really minimize how fast. Slow down. Now, this person, this client I'm talking about is a pretty high functioning client because they can walk in a balance speed. Remember, when I did the video on balance, a lot of kids have issues um, before they get up to standing in regards to balance. So is there a way that we can modify this? Um, I think this, I just want to show you some modifications for this balance beam. So I was saying like walking this way, but here's some things. You can have them walk backwards. Um, you have somebody like, move this other way now. Say, for example, you're really working on a lot of quadruped. You may want to have somebody just walk over the line. Let's bring it down even lower. Army crawl. You want to have good, whoops, I just broke my stuff. You want to have good reciprocal movements between the right and the left sides of the body. And you also want to have good coordinated movement between the upper part of the body and the lower part of the body. A lot of kids I work with, a lot of problems with that. So these are why you might want to call an occupational therapist. We can modify activities, take normal, typical devel developmental activities and modify it depending on what the issues are for your client. I think it's very important that clients help clean up. 
So that would be part of the activity. I did break it. Part of the fun. So we're going to kind of wrap this up, clean this up. But our session is not over. Because like I said before, in one of my other videos, we talk about self-regulation. We want to kind of like start our session, we build up. The obstacle course is kind of like the height, where we're physical, we're probably louder, we're talking, there's a lot of energy, and it's big. Go. It's a lot of energy, but we want to calm it back down. Let's bring it back down. Heaven knows, if I were to do awesome courses like this, have a lot of fun and this and that, and then bring my client back to the classroom, they're probably going to be too escalated and be unable to sit down and focus. Okay, maybe they're not going to school this year, but even in your own home, you want to calm back down so you can start fresh. Say, for example, you are going to go do some math. <laughs> this is kind of tightened. Let's calm it down, and then you can go on and do that. So, I talked about some different things on that self-regulation video. I had a choice, maybe I could burrow in the couch, maybe wrap up in a blanket, maybe um, sit in a rocking chair, rock back and forth, Say, for example, this is your child. Um, no, I don't want to show you that. Um, oh, what I'm hesitating on is an uh, activity I love to do is called steamroll. You have to be very careful with this. Um, again, safety. I like to roll the ball on my clients. I've done this many, many times. You have to be very careful about knowing how much on the other hand, some people, like, you know, I'm using one finger, that's very light. Probably not enough. Be very careful with this. So gentle. Pushing down. But not like. Oh, this is part of the training plan. Some kids really do like it heavier. I've had piles of beanbag chairs and equipment. Some people love and need that deep pressure so much. It's, um, I mean, adults can get a, a, a Swedish massage kind of thing. It's really, really important for that deep pressure. Again, that's that's a topic for the, the tactile stuff, information. There's a lot of information about that. Anyway, I'm kind of going on. The point is, let's do a little quiet time. I'm going to keep this very simple for me as a little demo lighting a little better. I won't take much time, but it's important to just actively participate. There we go. I'm going to take about 30 seconds. I'm not going to take very long. But like I said, we've been building. Now let's come back down and then we'll wrap it up for today but I will be back next week. God willing. <laughs> That's the plan. So, recommend just get in a comfortable position. You should not be sitting on the ball. If you're sitting on the ball, you are actively working. Those of you that do yoga and are, under, and are aware of what Shavasana is, it's kind of, you know, it's the same type of um, principle. You know, in yoga, start out slow, build up, and you're really active, and you work hard, and you come back down. So, Get in a comfortable position where you can really just rest. I think this is something, especially in America, we're really it's really hard for us to do, is to just calm down and relax. So, if you need some deep pressure or some rocking or some extra support, we talked about, do that. So, let's take a deep breath in and just slowly let it go. Take another deep breath in. Slowly let it go. As I calm down, I am becoming more aware of the sounds in the room. I 
can hear the whirling of the fan. I can feel the gentle breeze on my forehead. She's taking note. And then I'm going to bring it back to my breath. Deep breath in. Slowly let it go. And just let yourself feel inside your body. And know how important it is to calm ourselves down. I definitely know. So does my husband. How important it is for me to settle down. I'm going to slowly count down from 10 to 1. And when I get to 1, I will open my eyes and will wrap this up. And I will remember to breathe as I count. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Wiggle my fingers, my toes. And I can tell I calm down, and I hope you all calm down by being able to participate and take this time with me. So again, I'd like to use this as a communication tool. I really would like to just have fun. Um, this is who I am. It's, it's fun to play. So I want to use this as an opportunity to be able to share my experience, who I am, what I've learned throughout my life, and. I know there's people out there that um, are probably, uh, needs are really being unmet. A lot of sped kids. Diane, I see you're watching. I think of you and your daughter. <laughs> um, so hopefully this can be an opportunity where you guys can learn some things from me. It's my intent, I'm trying to get the light in there here, that every time I present at least some new concepts, um, I also have to be careful about, you know, giving out too much information and the safety information. Um, so anyway, I'm kind of babbling on. Here's my business card again. My phone number is area code 631-848-8852. You can PM me on Facebook. And eventually, I'm thinking I'll probably do um, Zoom as well um, at the same time. And I'd love to bring you guys on. Um, I'm still learning about this Facebook. Um, if you guys want to come on, like I think I can bring you on, your image on into this feed. Like if you have a question or if you have an activity um, that you're doing um, and want some suggestions, let's play with it, okay? So I'm thinking maybe next week, maybe just pick another similar like treatment activity. Um, there's a couple of things that I've talked about today, like the tactile stuff, visual motor, um, those are two right off the top. And how I'd also like to layer these informa this information so that um, when I reference something, you can go back to one of the other videos. Anyway, I do like to talk. Anyway, take good care. Thank you all. Um, I'm going to wave back to Diane and Paul. I love you too. Bye, everybody.